postcards from Mount Wellington. G'day and welcome to Forgotten Tasmania. I'm John Stevenson. Maria Grist has shared her amazing collection of postcards of Mount Wellington with me, and I'm going to show them to you in the form of a slideshow. Postcards became popular in the early 20th century, when printing methods had advanced enough to make the proposition viable. The earliest mass-produced picture postcards were monochromatic and sometimes even hand-coloured, and the images were put through a half-tone screen. The result looks quite primitive and low quality by today's standards, but it was revolutionary at the time. The earliest postcards had undivided backs, and people were asked to keep the back for the name and address. As a result, many people used the front of the card for writing messages. The A. Mather Company was established in the 19th century. By the early 1900s, they were producing picture postcards as a sideline to their main business, which was drapery. Ferntree Bower, with the 1897-1914 shelter shed at the left, Postpark 1904, A. Mather and Company postcard. Falls Hut was one of the ornate rustic recreational huts built on the lower slopes between 1890 and 1920. This photo is quite similar to the previous one and also shows the pre-1903 version of the hut, A. Mather and Company. This photo by Sirius shows Guy Fawkes Rivulet just above the Cascades. Sirius would have been a pseudonym. He won a medal in the Tasmanian International Exhibition 1891-92. He was a member of the Amateur Photographers Association at that time, but I believe later on he may have become a professional photographer. This one's circa 1904. Jay Walsh and Sons published a large volume of postcards, utilising shots from many photographers who are often uncredited. The company was founded by James Walsh. As well as postcards, stationery and the likes, the firm produced the famous Tasmanian Almanac or Red Book annually from 1862. It continued operation right through to the 20th century, and Walsh Optics is a spin-off company which still operates in Hobart. Fern Retreat Hut was another of those rustic recreational huts built on the lower slopes of Kunanyi, Mount Wellington, between 1890 and 1920. This early photo of the hut was taken before 1904, hand-coloured, J. Walsh and Son. Hewen Road, near the Turnipfields Junction. J. Walsh postcard. This photo is very similar to a J.W. Beatty card in Maria's collection. Postmark 1904. The same boy with a gun is visible in both photos. Hewen Road, J. Walsh postcard. Postmark 1906. Beatty. Ferntree Bower postcard by J.W. Beatty, probably around 1903-1904. Maria also has a glass lantern slide of this same shot. Ferntree Bower postcard by J.W. Beatty, probably around 1903-1904. Printing processes had advanced enough by around 1915 to start to make it viable to produce postcards using real photographic processes. These cards were vastly superior to the printed cards, and although more expensive, they attained a high degree of popularity. Bailey. The photographer Henry Bailey was greatly captivated by the rustic recreational hut culture which existed on Kunanyi Mount Wellington in the early 20th century, and his were some of the last photographs taken of the huts before their demise. There were actually two photographers named H. Bailey who worked together in Hobart, a father and son. Henry Hall Bailey, the father, born 1939, was active in Hobart between 1860 and around 1880. He died in 1896. His son was likely to have been Henry Hobart Bailey, who was born in 1868 and died in 1921. Henry Jr. was the photographer who created most, if not all, of the photos shown here today. Ferntree Hotel by Bailey. The hotel unfortunately burnt down in the 1967 bushfires. Bailey photo of the Clematis Hut, one of the recreational huts built on the lower slopes of Mount Wellington. This is the second version. Clematis was rebuilt after vandals burned it in 1909. So that makes this date 1910 to 1920. 
Daily photo of the Clematis hut in winter. The Hotel Mount Wellington, Springs Hotel, shown here before extensions were added in the 1920s. The hotel's architect was Alan Walker, who also designed St Raphael's Church at Ferntree and the Hobart GPO. The Hotel Mount Wellington Company, which built the hotel, was headed by local politician Henry Dobson. Photo by Bailey, circa 1910. Henry Dart was a photographer and a member of the Falls Hut, one of the then famous rustic huts on the mountain. He started business in 1897 and had a studio in Harrington Street, which existed beside a brick building on the corner of Victoria Street before a fire destroyed it in 1906. Members of the Falls Hut on the bridge they built, 1903 or a little later. William Fellows, photographer, worked for the Illustrated Tasmanian Mail, as well as from his own home studio. His core years were around 1915 to 1935. He died in 1954, aged 76. Most of his photos are inscribed DIC, which stood for Direct Importing Company, which was originally a fancy goods shop in Elizabeth Street. Fellows moved out of this premises in 1926 and continued working as a photographer from his studio in Newdigate Street. Sphinx Rock. This is a sandstone outcrop on Mount Wellington, which the photographer named Ape Rock in this photo. It appears the two names were used concurrently for a time. Postmark 1915. The entrance to the bow before 1914 bushfires. Two tree ferns have been tied together to form an archway, which is also visible in other photos of the time. The Cascade Tea Gardens were opened in 1894, and one of the caretakers, Victor Sawyer, filled the grounds with masses of popular flowers for many years. Cascade Brewery. The chief brewer's house is visible on the small tree-covered hill towards the centre left of this photo. The Clematis Hotel was first built probably around the 1890s. It was destroyed by arson in 1909 and rebuilt very soon after. Here we see the rebuilt version with a summer house at the bottom right. A view up towards the organ pipes. Another view of Sphinx Rock, date most likely pre-1915. The Hobart City Council bought the building from the Hotel Mount Wellington Company in 1919 and it was renamed the Springs Hotel. The hotel was burnt down in the 1967 bushfires and was never rebuilt. This photo likely taken in the 1920s or maybe early 1930s. Another view of the Springs Hotel. This photo likely taken in the 1920s or early 1930s. W Fellows Postcard. Mount Wellington from Ocean Pier, W Fellows Postcard. Harvey Richard Crawford was a keen amateur photographer. He lived between 1883 and 1965, and by profession he was a law clerk. His photographs were all of a high standard and are still highly regarded today. St Crispin's Well is a water intake for the Hobart water supply, which is situated on the pipeline track to Wellington Falls. This view of the track to St Crispin's Well by R.C. Harvey shows the railway line looking a little overgrown with weeds. The name St Crispin's Well was coined in 1875 by Alderman of the Hobart City Council during official visit and inspection of the location. This postcard is postmarked December 1907. Falls at Humphreys Rivulet, Glenorchy. This waterfall is directly fed by the mountain the distinctive stone in the foreground is still in place today, postmark 1911. Falls Hut was one of the rustic recreational huts built on Mount Wellington in the early 20th century. This photo shows the hut after the 1903 renovations when a new wing had been added, see the roof line at the left, date circa 1910. Strickland Falls used to be called Lady Edeline Falls after Lady Edeline Strickland, the wife of then Governor, Sir Gerald Strickland. He was Governor from 1904 to 1909. 
The Cascade Brewery placed an intake for gathering water above these falls by 1921 and possibly much earlier. A small concrete dam and an iron intake pipe remain above the falls to this day. J.C. Joseph Christopher Breeden, 1877 to 1947, was a landscape photographer and an authority on Tasmanian wildflowers. Maria has a beautiful collection of his hand-coloured wildflower postcards, which we're not showing today. Breeden was a life member of the Southern Tasmanian Photographic Society and also a member of the Royal Society and the Field Naturalists Club. His core years were the 1930s. Many of his postcards were bought by collectors and not posted at all. Early photoshopping. There was no road to the pinnacle at the time this postcard was created. This vehicle was photographed separately, printed, cut out, pasted onto the photo and then re-photographed. At normal viewing sizes this process was seamless, but on magnification it's a bit visible. Breeden performed this trick more than once. A second similar photo, not a postcard, the original before re-photographing and featuring a different vehicle, is in the Ted Cornish collection. Date of this photo was likely to be the mid-1930s as the road was completed by 1937 and I believe the photographer was speculating on how the finished road might look. The new road to the Pinnacle, date 1937. The new road to the Pinnacle, written on the back, 7th of the 4th 39, the rock cabin shelter which was completed a few years before the road is also shown in this photo. View from the Pinnacle showing the newly built lookout, post-1937. Silver Falls Fern Tree Bower, looking quite tidy here, hand-coloured. The Bower Fern Tree. Cascade Brewery. The updates to the brewery building were completed in 1927 and the road up the mountain, scar visible here, was built in 1937. The Cascades Hobart Rivulet, or possibly Guy Fawkes Rivulet. This would be pre-1937 photo, as the mountain road isn't visible. A hand-coloured postcard. Waterworks Reserve, upper reservoir with fountain. Hand dated 1939 on the rear of the card. Springs Hotel after the 1920s extensions were built. Notice the row of cars parked on the lower right. This is dated circa 1930. Poltus Michael Koonin, born 1883 or 1884, was a Russian political activist who operated a photographic business in Hobart in the years 1910 to 1912. Koonin was one of the earliest of several photographers who would set up their cameras on Huon Road in order to photograph the Sharabonks filled with tourists as they came down from the springs. Coonan sold these postcards to the tourists as a memento of their trip. Sharabonks were a large open coach fitted with tiered seating for passengers. They had a high centre of gravity and were often overloaded, making them unstable and dangerous, as well as uncomfortable. Smaller horse-drawn vehicles used for conveying passengers were called brakes. The horses were sometimes underfed, their workload was considerable, and not every driver treated them well, but the SPCA worked hard to alleviate these conditions. One of several accidents over the years was recorded in March of 1921, when a brake overturned on the Hewen Road near the turnip fields, resulting in the hospitalisation of several passengers. During the 1920s, these horse-drawn vehicles were eventually replaced with motor buses. The examiner in 1911 gives this fascinating information about Coonan. Mr Coonan is touring Australasian states in pursuance of a mission he has imposed upon himself in connection with the trouble in Russia. He was arrested because he moved a resolution at a students' meeting warning the Jewish community that a massacre was intended in Krishnikov. About six weeks after that warning, the massacre took place. Subsequently, Mr. Coonan was sent to the Siberian prisons without trial. There he spent two and a half years and he escaped. His photographic work did not receive the same publicity in Tasmania as his political activities. In March 1910, he registered a general photography firm under the name P.M. Coonan and Company. 
This business was located at 70 Elizabeth Street, Hobart. Coonan left Australia for South Africa in 1912. After he left Tasmania, other photographers took up this task, but the resulting postcards were rarely credited. Number 227. This one is postmarked 24th of the 1st, 1912, written on the front, in the mountain last Sunday. An X is marked above one of the passengers. Behind this charabunk we see a break. William James Little was a Hobart photographer who created many beautiful photos of the mountain, as well as other subjects of course. He was born in Hobart in 1870. He sold postcards from his shop at 181 Elizabeth Street around the 1900s. His fellow photographer William Fellows, DIC, sold off a lot of his stock in 1914, so the majority of his work would probably predate that year. The organ pipes, a lovely telephoto shot of the mountain before the mountain road and other developments were built. Date on the back, 1913. Hotel Mount Wellington, or Springs Hotel, shown here before the extensions were added in the 1920s. The hotel's architect was Alan Walker, who also designed St Raphael's Church at Ferntree and the Hobart GPO. This photo was taken not long after the hotel was opened in 1907. Sphinx Rock, circa 1925. The Pinnacle by W.J. Little. The Rocking Stones. Visitors would bring walnuts to crack beneath the stone as it was possible to rock it by hand, very slightly, with very little effort. Today the rock has settled and will no longer move. Clematis Hut was one of the rustic recreational huts which were built on the slopes of Kunani Mount Wellington in the early 20th century. In this photo we see the first version of the hut before it was burnt by vandals in 1909. The hut was rebuilt in a similar style not long afterwards. See the next photo. Clematis Hut, second version of the hut, rebuilt after being burnt by vandals in 1909. In this WJ Little photo we see the hut after 1903 extensions were built. Falls Hut. In this photo we see the hut most likely not long after 1903 extensions. In this photo the veranda has been further beautified as compared with the previous photo. This one was printed by the Tasmanian Mail on the 1st of June 1911. Fern Retreat Hut. In this photo we see the hut right rear after its 1904-1905 rebuild. The building at the left was the summer house, so that makes this date likely 1910. Fern Retreat Hut in winter. This photo was printed in the Tasmanian Mail, 1st of June 1911. The Wellington Hut, WJ Little photo, 1911. The Wellington Hut. This hand-coloured WJ Little photo was also printed in the Tasmanian Mail, 1st of June 1911. The Waratah Hut, postmark 1909 on the reverse. You can see all the photos from this episode, along with the research references and links on our website, ForgottenTasmania.com. And now I'd like to show you a related video about something I mentioned earlier in this episode. Just click here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.